all of the allegations against Diddy. In November 2023, the singer Cassie, real name Cassandra Ventura, filed an explosive federal lawsuit against her former partner Sean, Diddy Combs, claiming he had been physically and sexually abusive throughout their relationship. The complaint alleged that Combs's abuse ranged from beating Ventura and forcing her to have sex with other men to raping her at her home in 2018. The rapper settled the lawsuit within a day. But since then, eight more women and two men have sued Combs, accusing him of a wide range of abusive behavior including sexual harassment, rape, non-consensual pornography, and sex trafficking. The situation escalated in March when federal agents raided Combs' properties in Miami and Los Angeles. And then on September 16th, federal agents arrested Combs at a Manhattan hotel following a grand jury indictment. The music mogul was charged with racketeering and sex trafficking, to which he pleaded not guilty. A judge ruled that he be held without bail until trial. Following the raids, Combs's lawyer Aaron Dyer maintained that his client is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. The music mogul has denied all of his accuser's allegations. I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy, he said in December. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. However, in May, CNN published graphic security footage showing Combs assaulting Ventura in a hotel back in 2016, which lines up closely with the allegations in her suit. Following the leak, Combs issued a video apology, saying, My behavior on that video is inexcusable. Here's everything you need to know about the accusations against Combs. Cassie alleged she was the victim of a pattern of abuse, violence, and sex trafficking. Ventura sued under New York's Adult Survivors Act, which gave victims a one-time one-year window to sue their alleged sexual abusers and institutions, even if the statute of limitations had run out. The window expired in November. She says she first met Combs in 2005, when she was 19 and he was 37. In the lawsuit, she alleges that Combs controlled nearly every aspect of her life, from her career to her personal medical records. She claims he was frequently violent, physically abusing her multiple times a year, and that he often plied her with copious amounts of drugs. The complaint also claims that Combs forced Ventura to have sex with male sex workers in different cities. Encounters she says he watched, masturbated to, and recorded. The singer says she never went to the police because she was afraid that doing so would merely give Mr. Combs another excuse to hurt her. She also alleges that, following a dinner in 2018, Combs forced himself into her apartment and raped her while she repeatedly said no and tried to push him away. Ventura says she ended the relationship for good afterward. In her lawsuit, she referred to multiple witnesses who saw the abuse take place. One of them is her friend, singer-songwriter Tiffany Redd, who wrote an open letter to Combs describing an incident on Ventura's 29th birthday party in 2015. Ventura and Red claim that that night, Combs and his security team forced Ventura to leave because he wanted her to have sexual encounters with other men. In a statement to the New York Times, Combs's lawyer Benjamin Braffman said Combs denied the allegations and that the lawsuit was riddled with baseless and outrageous lies, aiming to tarnish Mr. Combs's reputation and seeking a payday. Ventura and Combs settled the lawsuit one day after it was filed. The details remain private. Braffman said that the settlement is in no way an admission of wrongdoing. Video shows Diddy assaulting Cassie back in 2016. In May, CNN released security footage showing Combs assaulting Ventura in the elevator bay at the now-closed Intercontinental Hotel in Los Angeles in 2016. The video appears to support a similar incident Ventura described in her suit. Combs followed her into the hallway of the hotel while yelling at her. He grabbed at her and then took glass vases in the hallway and threw them at her, causing glass to crash around them as she ran to the elevator to escape. Ventura's complaint reads, After the video was made public, Combs posted an apology video on Instagram. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I got into going to therapy, going to rehab, 
I had to ask God for his mercy and grace, Combs said. I'm so sorry. In an interview with Piers Morgan, Combs' former head of security said he wasn't surprised by the footage because he witnessed the rapper being violent toward women four or five times. Roger Bonds, who worked for the mogul for a decade, alleged he had seen Combs be violent toward Cassie and his former partner Kim Porter, with whom he shares three children. Porter died in 2018 from pneumonia. Ten more people have come forward with allegations against Diddy. Following Ventura's settlement, Liza Gardner filed a lawsuit on November 23rd. She says she and a friend met Combs and singer-songwriter Aaron Hall at an MCA Records event in 1990 or 1991. They returned to Hall's apartment for an after-party, where Gardner says she was offered more drinks and was coerced into having sex with Combs. She says Combs also assaulted her friend. The lawsuit claims the encounter left Gardner shocked and traumatized. And as she got dressed, Hall allegedly barged into the room, pinned her down, and forced her to have sex with him. Gardner claims that Combs came to the home she shared with her friend a few days later and allegedly attacked her again. He came to the house looking for the friend because he was worried she would tell the girl he was with at the time, according to the suit. In another complaint filed the same day, Joy dickerson alleges that in 1991, she reluctantly went on a date with Combs, who intentionally drugged and sexually assaulted her after their dinner. She claims that Combs recorded the assault and showed the tape to other people. While dickerson did not go to the authorities immediately after the alleged assault, she says she did eventually file a police report with unspecified agencies in New York and New Jersey. The complaint says prosecutors told her they'd need to corroborate her allegations, but she believes possible witnesses were terrified that Combs would retaliate against them and that they would lose future business and music opportunities if they made a statement backing her account. A spokesperson for Diddy said the two women's claims are fabricated and accused them of exploiting the Adult Survivors Act. Another woman, referred to as Jane Doe in the complaint, filed a fourth lawsuit on December 6th, alleging that Combs, his longtime Lieutenant Harve Pierre, and a third unidentified assailant trafficked her across state lines from Detroit to New York City and gang-raped her at Combs's Manhattan recording studio in 2003, when she was 17 years old. Pierre, who previously served as president of Combs's Bad Boy Entertainment, has also been sued by a former assistant, who alleges he used his position of authority as plaintiff's boss to groom, exploit, and sexually assault her several times between 2016 and 2017. In February, Combs's former producer and videographer filed a federal lawsuit against the mogul, alleging Combs sexually harassed, drugged, and threatened him. According to the lawsuit, Rodney Lil Rod Jones worked on Combs's most recent album, Love, and lived with him between September 2022 and November 2023. Jones alleges he was the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his anus by Mr. Combs. On one occasion, the lawsuit claims, Jones woke up naked and disoriented in bed with Combs and two sex workers. The complaint also claims that, in his role as Combs's videographer, Jones secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Mr. Combs, his staff, and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. The illegal activity the suit alleges includes acquiring drugs, soliciting sex workers, providing laced drinks to minors, and sexual assault. Jones's suit names several other defendants, including Combs's son Justin, Combs's chief of staff, Christina Coram, Universal Music Group CEO Sir Lucian Grange, and former Motown Records CEO Ethiopia Haptomerium. Combs's lawyer, Sean Holly, denied Jones's allegations. In April, a separate lawsuit was filed against Combs's son Christian Combs, in which a woman alleged that the 26-year-old drugged her and sexually assaulted her on a yacht chartered by the music mogul in December 2022. The suit also names Combs as a defendant. In her complaint, Grace Omarque accused the rapper of aiding and abetting his son. Omarque, who worked on the yacht as a steward, also claimed she witnessed partying and drug use between celebrities and constant rotation of suspected sex workers. Then, in May, another suit was filed in federal court by Crystal McKinney, who alleges Combs forced her to perform oral sex on him in 2003. The lawsuit was brought under New York City's Victims of Gender-Motivated Violence Act, 
which gives survivors a two-year look-back window to file civil claims against their alleged abusers after the statute of limitations has passed. Combs has yet to comment on the allegations. On May 24th, April Lampros became the seventh person to file a suit against Combs, accusing him of drugging and assaulting her over several years beginning in 1995, per NBC. Lampros claims she first met Combs in 1994, when she was a student at the Fashion Institute of Technology. She alleges that the next year, she met up with him at a bar and gave into pressure from Combs to drink because of his delusional and violent outbursts. After a few sips, Lampros felt uneasy and says she was guided into a car that took her and Combs to a hotel, where he forcibly kissed and grabbed her, despite her telling him to stop and saying that she felt unwell. Ms. Lampros was being raped by Mr. Combs, and she soon passed out. The lawsuit claims, Lampros says that after the incident, Combs wooed her back by sending lavish gifts and flowers. Per NBC, the lawsuit includes a photo of a handwritten Valentine's Day card signed from Puffy. Combs allegedly assaulted Lampros for a second time later in 1995 and a third time in 1996, forcing her and his then-girlfriend, Kim Porter, to take ecstasy and have sex with one another. Lampros says that she vocally opposed this idea, but Combs reminded her that he could make her lose her job, the suit claims. Lampros claims that Combs watched the women while he masturbated before sexually assaulting her. The eighth accuser, Derek Lee Cardello-Smith, sued Combs alleging the producer drugged and sexually assaulted him at a party in Detroit in 1997. Cardello-Smith, 51, says that he met Diddy while working at a restaurant. The men allegedly went to a party where they met a group of women and later had sex with them. The lawsuit claims that Combs offered Cardello Smith a drink, which he believes was spiked. He alleges he passed out and woke up to the producer having sex with a woman and telling him, I did this to you too. Cardello Smith was convicted of sexual misconduct in a separate case and is currently incarcerated. At a preliminary hearing conducted virtually in August, he testified that Combs offered him $2.3 million in exchange for dropping the lawsuit. He rejected the settlement offer. He also produced prison visitation records showing Combs' name. On September 9th, Combs failed to show up to a virtual hearing on the case. As a result, Lenawee County Circuit Court Judge Anna Marie Anzalone awarded Cardello Smith a $100 million default judgment to be paid in $10 million installments beginning in October. But on September 18th, Anzalone set aside the judgment after Combs's legal team successfully argued that Cardello Smith did not serve the lawsuit in accordance with Michigan law. And because Cardello Smith's allegations date back to 1997 and are well outside the statute of limitations, the lawsuit is expected to be dismissed.